good. What's going on? It's been a little while. There's no getting around that, but it's been a good reason. I have spent the last couple months doing a lot of um, curated sort of herb tours around the country. Uh, so obviously you can't film a lot when you've got guests with you the whole time. So that has been the reason. It's not because I have just been hanging out and not getting out in the field. But today that's going to change. We, right now, we're heading out to a couple of local nature reserves in Cape Town. But a week or so ago, I headed out to the Clane and Galetikaru with Oliver and Peaches. It was a bit of a failed trip, but we are going to roll that little pre-roll of what we got up to on that trip. And then I will see you and we're going to get out to some local Cape Town hopes today. We got a big man's. That is a big leopard tortoise. I don't know where he's gonna go because you can't get it anywhere. He's a behemoth. Yeah, he's pretty much stuck against his fence line. So. Monstrous. So this is a newly hatched southern rock Ugama, Ugama Atra. This thing's absolutely tiny and nice to actually get the first herb of the day on the board. But we're going to carry on and see what else we can turn up in this habitat. So have a look at this. We had started to see a couple of snake tracks buzzing around this little bush here. Me and my boy Peaches, of course. And you can see we've been walking all around here for a little minute. Peaches went one way, I went the other way, and Peaches bent down to this little bush where you saw the tracks go. And have a look at that. There is a decent sized puff adder just sitting out here, out of the wind in the shade. A really nice colored one, actually. Uh, if I see if I can give you guys a better look at the head, let me just shift around real quick. But yeah, here's a, a decent look at the head. Um, we are going to try gently extract the snake out of this little bush. It's, full of thorns and then let's have a little look at it and yeah so here is a closer look at that puff adder you can see it's a fairly decent size quite different in coloration it's much more of the sandy brown and dark hues unlike the ones we're used to seeing in Cape Town but of course it's perfectly blended for its environment here when you see it against the habitats and the actual sand where this animal occurs. So absolutely beautiful even in this late afternoon light. But we're pretty much done with this guy. We shot a couple of photographs so let's just release it and we're gonna put it back into its bush. So it's releasing this puffer back into his bush. You can see as they make their trails, the tip of the tail goes into the sand. That's why you can often see what it's a puffer or a little ladder. So Courtney just got this question ground Nagama, Nagama Kiriata. He's a bit of an angry boy, but he was just sitting like in amongst this sort of gravelly there we go, focus. Okay, you can see they're actually really pretty agamas in the daytime, they look even better. Nice good sized male. He's got a long tail, he's not missing any of it either. Check it out. Oh, he's got like a little mohawk going on the back there. Cool. Let's go. The wind is absolutely howling, but here's a really cute little common giant gecko. Things have been really quiet, so it's probably the last find of tonight. So we just arrived at our first site for the day. You can see we out here in the clays or the marshlands. Um, just all of sort of Table Mountain and Table Mountain National Park in the background. We're going to get after after some chameleons today, some caramelly frogs, and I'm sure we can flip a few snakes. But yeah, let's get after it and see what we're going to turn up. I'm just going to try to lift up, or see if any of these pieces of concrete can lift. You see, it looks like there's been something under there, but it doesn't look like it's there anymore.
set up so many of these flip clips and they always land up failing. There you go. Oh, we got a double flip. Check this out. We have one brown water snake. Let me zoom in here. And we have another tiny brown water snake. Let me grab these guys quick and we can have a look closer look at them. So as luck would have it, as I was putting back the piece of artificial cover, which is again, an important thing to do. Otherwise you destroy the micro habitat of these animals and then you don't find them again. But I did lose the one, but if we have another one, we'll just get some quick photographs of this little brown water snake and we'll just let him go. And here's that little brown water snake and there it goes. So I just flipped a tiny little rock under this little tree like this little bush, and I got a beautiful oscillated gecko. These geckos are really common in this area, so not a uh, rare sight, but they are beautiful each in their own right. Uh, this one actually has an original tail, which is quite unusual. Most of them have these regenerated tails, and they obviously are quite bulbous, so they lack the patterns on the tail. But yeah, always nice to see. I haven't seen one of these in a couple of weeks, so we'll take it. Just gonna grab a couple of vouchers just because it's got a beautiful tail and we'll just let him go back under his bush. Oh, there you go. We got a brown water snake. A bit of a decent size one compared to those little baby ones that we've been getting. Full of sand as usual. Um, oh, these things musk, they usually smell terrible. You can see they've got a beautiful yellow belly. The ones in the eastern parts of the country generally have a pinkish or an orange belly but you can see these guys living right here right next to the little marshland just under some artificial cover that's to see a decent sized one after those two little ones yeah we'll grab a quick photograph of this guy and we'll just let him go here's a look at that larger brown water snake i mean it's not large by any wild means of the imagination but Compared to those little hatchlings we saw earlier, you can see they've always got that tail upper and lower lip, which usually is why people think they are herald snakes. I think that's the sign of a herald snake, but clearly not. You can see he's just quite relaxed now, but we can let him go. Snap a couple of pictures. What is up, guys? Talk about a change of scenery. We're out here on the upper slopes of Table Mountain. We I'm going to try to see if we can find some ghost frogs today. I can hear the peninsula moss frogs calling just in these beds here. So let's give it a go. And guys, here we go. This is just what we've been looking for. This is the Table Mountain ghost frog. Apologies for the noise. I'm just right under a waterfall. Just waiting for my friends to come here and I will show them the frog. But have a look at the habitat that this frog is in. We're basically looking for frogs underneath the waterfall. Incredible. Table Mountain Ghost Frog. Critically endangered species that is only found in a very few silic streams that are still up here on Table Mountain. Oh, double flip. Check it out. We got two brown house snakes, Bodon Capensis. Let me switch over to my phone so we can see better. Wow, the one is really light. That one's beautiful. Yeah, but have a look at that. We've got one that's really dark. I've got another one that's absolutely beautiful. It's almost a caramel color. Let me grab this one. Freezing cold little guy. Beautiful Bodon Capensis. Presumably it gets a bit of sun later in the day, but yeah, these snakes are in beautiful condition too. Always nice to see brown house snakes 
within the greater confines of Cape Town. Very uncommon species in the southern suburbs of Cape Town. Sorry, the northern suburbs of Cape Town. Let's give me a little snip. But yeah, let's put the rock pack and I'll photograph these guys quick and then we can let them go. Here goes this much lighter one. Just pop him right back under his rock. He just doesn't seem to want to go. Let's carry on and see what else we can find. <clears throat> Whoa! Check that out. That is a huge brown house snake. Let me get the phone out. We can have a better look at him. Well, this rock is a bit heavy. But have a look at that. That's flipped. I haven't seen a big brown house like this, house snake like this, in a while down here in the Cape. They are extremely uncommon throughout most of the. Well, they're pretty much absent in the city of Cape Town. This is in the northern suburbs where it's a lot sort of hotter and drier typically and that's an absolutely gorgeous brown house snake just after we got those two little ones we'll snap a couple pictures of this big guy and then just obviously put him back under this rock Photographing some cape girdle lizards up on this little rocky outcrop. You can see, I don't know how well they'll be able to see, but you can see there just in the photo, just a young one basking. But he is much too small to try and get seen on the footage here. But I'm gonna work some of these rocks here and see if we can't turn up any snakes. Yeah, I just stopped here and we'll inspect these little rocks and see what we can see. If we don't just get more ants and bugs. I really like flipping rocks in this dense sort of grass cover. They're coming out. Oh, a little mantid. Oh. Switch over to the phone. I don't think you guys will be able to see this. There's a tiny rhombic egg eater. So, yeah, there's our little rhombic egg eater we just flipped. Dusty Pelter Scarborough. He's tiny. Um, and as the name suggests, if we can get him out, these guys feed exclusively on bird eggs. This snake's probably about a year old. I just see means he's got beautiful orange chevrons along the back there. Um, these guys get to well over a meter, they get large enough to eat sort of chicken chicken eggs or in the wild you're eating a lot of spur fowl and guinea fowl eggs. Gorgeous little snake, we again we'll get some photos of the camera and we'll just come back and chuck them under this rock. But we're gonna work through the rest of these rocks and see what we can turn up. Here's a look at that tiny rhombic egg eater finished getting a couple of photographs of it but you can actually just release it right back under the rock from where it came. Oh there's an Acontius. So this is a Cape Legless King. Acontius miliagris. If it'll sit still for a hot second. These are these legless or limbless lizards you would have seen 
the one we got out the other day, but I'm not going to bother much with this guy, so we are going to put the rock back, as one does, and this guy will just disappear into the pine needles and he'll find his way back under there. Recording? So we just got to a new spot and we're just going to walk along these rest years and try to see if we can't find chameleons as usual. Uh, is that one? It is. And just while doing the intro, we have our first chameleon. This is just the Cape Dwarf chameleon. So if you're a regular viewer to the YouTube channel, it's not something that is too much of a shock. But you can see he's blending in so well. And it's always a pleasure to see these guys. I'll we'll grab a quick photograph and then see if we can't find any others. So here's the chameleon I just found and I'm just walking over to the next rest of your bed and I spotted that one. A good looking female just basking and as I was walking around here I saw another one also quite dark um, right center of the frame another beautiful Cape Dwarf chameleon so I'm not going to disturb these ones they're obviously basking it's quite chilly today although it is sunny so just getting a bit of sun rays look at this I just picked up this Cape Legless Kink, the Contius Meliagris. It's just under a piece of rubble right over there. So I just moved over here to get some photographs. Um, I know a lot of people are really intrigued by these legless lizards. Um, they have a superficial resemblance to that of the American glass lizards, although these guys are completely fossorial, so you don't really get them up on the surface. Occasionally, I've picked up a couple of road cruising at night, but these guys just burrow deep down in the soil. You can see he's giving it a good go now, but you can see just how smooth and shiny their scales are, just you know, made for burrowing. He's got a dumpy little stubby tail. Yeah, I'm just going to leave him in this little bed of some succulents, and then he will carry on going on about his day. Okay, legless skin, Contest Meliagris. What do we have here? It is a little man's it's a tiny little angular tortoise. <laughs> Let me speak to Beautiful looking one. It's got a nice pale dot on the end there. Um, probably just munching away on some of these green bits of vegetation. I'm getting my camera out and trying to see if I can't get some in situ pictures. Um, just without disturbing too much. And I'll set up the phone at the same time. Just walking along this little two track road. It's uh, not a publicly used road, it's just here in the reserve, so there's no chance of cars or anything. But I've often seen mole snakes cruising around this particular area, so let's see how long we can run the GoPro for and hopefully we'll get in luck. Um, in one of my videos last year, just oh, down by those bushes there somewhere. I actually had two mole snakes basking in the same um, little bush and they were there for a couple of weeks. I came back and saw them several times, which was pretty cool. But yeah, we'll see how long we can run this and hopefully we can bump into something. GoPro, stop recording. I just found another Cape Dwarf chameleon. This one's actually just crossing a pathway. Sorry about the dogs, I'm just right next to a residential house. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna let this guy crawl back and just rest your bed. Beautiful. Oh uh, yeah, this is a male. You can tell by not only his color, but the hemipenal bulges there. Absolutely gorgeous. So the GoPro died. And I don't know if you guys can see it yet, but there is a mole snake. Just moving, oh, he might come onto the road. You can see his head is just poking out there. And this is probably like, I don't know, a couple, 20, 30 meters from where I saw those two the other day. Well, I say the other day, it was quite a while ago. But 
you can see right in front of Tim Mountain and that's a decent sized mosaic. It's not a big mosaic by any means but let's see how close we can get to him without spooking him. And he's just cruising along. It's quite cool and overcast although the sun is out so it's probably looking for a feed on a mosaic. Let's see if we can go up to him. Yeah, yeah, he's seen us. Let me see if I can grab him quick. <laughs> there you go. I managed to get hands on him just before he got into the bush there. Um, he's quite a thin animal. He's definitely should have a lot more weight on it than he does now. Um, so I'm hoping before winter this guy gets a decent meal in him. You can hear him hissing. He's definitely not happy, but don't believe everything they tell you with most things giving you big nasty bites being super aggressive I literally just picked this guy up off the ground and there he goes I'm not actually gonna harass him any longer I'm just gonna let him do his thing just as I was getting ready to head back to the car and do a little outro I found this beautifully marked big female kept off chameleon busy basking see they often go these dark light and dark alternating stripes to blend in with the shadows so this is definitely gonna be the last find for the day so thanks so much for watching a little bit of a mixed bag today and i will catch you guys out on the next one